you know, as I'm singing the song, I'm, I'm, I'm noticing one word that comes off the, the screen. I believe. I believe God's going to do it. I believe he has me. I believe he's moving in me. I believe things are breaking right now. It doesn't matter how you feel. It doesn't matter your circumstance. Things are breaking. The Holy Spirit is moving in your life. He's moving in this church, in our community. Do you believe it? Well, then sit down. Let's get into this. Come on. Worship team, thank you. Man, good to see you guys this morning. Youth group, welcome back. We're good to have you. We missed you last week. I know you had a big party, right? Amen. Two of you did? Okay. Yeah. Um, a few things I want to cover real quick. I've got a new talk that we're kicking off today. Uh, but before we get into it, I want to encourage you all with some stuff. Uh, the Lord's been dealing with me about a few things over the last couple of months. And I'm, I really felt that song was appropriate because I believe things are not only changing in my life, but in our church. Now, if you're waiting for a feeling, it'll be a minute. You know, the key to the life of faith is you have to believe some stuff. You got to believe that God's working in your life. You got to believe the things that he says about you. And one of the things that the Lord began to remind me of, and, and I was talking with my team about it, and they were on the same page with me, in, in, uh, was when I started using my Bible again. Right? What about that? Yeah, Cody's the one that, uh, he rem Cody, he rolled old school with me. He, I told Cody the other day, he's got an old soul. Yeah, and he reminded me of something. Y'all remember this? We're not going to start it back, but this is my Bible. Huh? It's God speaking to me. I am what it says I am. I can have what it says I can have. I can do what it says I can do. And today... I will receive the ever-living, never-changing, indestructible, all-powerful Word of God. Should you dare to believe God's going to speak to you today? Amen. Is that a radical thought to come into a church service where the Holy Spirit is moving and you expect God to speak to you? Yeah. And so what we want to encourage you with is start bringing your Bible. I know some of you digital, that's okay, be digital. But I'd like to see some of you walk in here with your, I mean, Cody got a coffee table Bible. <laughs> yeah. Because I want to start using it more. The thing I've learned about uh, as I started back using the Bible, I'm led more when I preach. Because I've got a scripture that I didn't put in my talking points, and all of a sudden I'm open to that chapter, and God shows me something else in the chapter that I may not have needed, but you needed it. I'm glad he doesn't give me names beside the scriptures, you know what I'm saying? <clears throat> I, would be, I would be distracted with a lot of that. And so I want to encourage you to bring your Bible. You ready for this? Take some notes. I know, I'm pushing it right now, yeah. Bring a notebook. Matter of fact, we have little notebooks in the back for you for free if you want one. They're at the communion station. Just grab you one. Here's the thing. When you write something down, it really solidifies that thought much better in, in your soul. Uh, you know, because we, we have the scriptures and stuff on you version, and we have been putting the talking points there, but we want to, we're working towards, you know, something in the next couple weeks that's going to change how my sermons are transcribed so that you'll have a more accurate, because a lot of times I'll have stuff in notes, and well, the Lord will go a completely different direction, and, and you're looking at that and like, where is he at? I'm in the spirit, <laughs> right? Well, we'd like to say that, amen. So that being said, <clears throat> my new talk today is this. You ever listen to yourself? I know, you, you need to give that a minute. Yeah, if you ever, because uh, sometimes as a pastor, I wonder if anybody listens to me, right? I know, because I'll say something and I'm like, 
you were here Sunday. You don't remember that? And they're like, oh, you said that? Yeah. So let's, uh, let's unpack this, okay? Let's pray. Father, we love you. We thank you so much for faithful people. Holy Spirit, speak to our hearts today. Stretch our faith. Anoint us to be vessels set aside for your use, that we're not preoccupied with everything else going on in the world, that we still have this awareness that we are your ambassadors on the planet. We love you, Jesus. May our lives honor you in your precious name. Amen. Now, I was having this conversation uh, a couple weeks ago, and it was over the subject of uh, Romans chapter 10. You know, the whole believe and confess deal? Y'all, okay, help a brother out. Don't, don't make me preach on it. And the Lord reminded me of something that he said in the Gospels. Jesus made this statement. He said, all too well, you reject the word of God because of your traditions. And man, have I ever seen that in my journey of faith as a pastor, the people and their opinions and their traditions that they have been taught over the years, and it's not even remotely close to what Jesus said. See, I think this is the thing. I'm, I'm, I'm praying that with this talk, as we kind of dig into it a little bit, the whole believing and speaking, this is kind of where the Lord's taken me in this series. You ever listen to yourself? Do you ever hear some of the stuff that just flows up out of your mouth? Huh? Like, where did that come from? I'm going to tell you in a minute. Be cool. In the Gospel of John, Jesus tells us this. He, he says, I only speak or I only spoke what I saw from the Father. So what about us today? As one of his disciples, what's our talking look like? Now, now listen, there is no condemnation for those of us who are in Christ, but there is some conviction, hopefully, that the Holy Spirit is dealing with us about things as we yield ourselves to him, as we submit ourselves to the word of God, hopefully he's correcting and challenging. Self-evaluate. Ask those closest to you. My staff tells me all the time, man, you just look mean up there. <laughs> Bree, don't help. <laughs> She's like, yes, you do. I don't want to look mean. It's, it's, I only have one face. <laughs> okay, Michaela. <laughs> it's hard to talk. And so, I know politicians can do it, but I'm, I'm not one of them. <laughs> anyway, what's your talking look like? I, I'm believing that the Lord's going to help all of us. Does it matter what we say? Huh? How often do you say what the Father says? You ever listen to yourself? I think your, your spirit after this talk is going to check you a little bit. In the Gospel of John, Jesus tells us this in chapter 6. It is the spirit that gives life. The flesh profits nothing. How many of y'all think Jesus meant what he said? Yeah, so, so a lot of the stuff that you do in the flesh, and I know people can do stuff in their carnal human nature that is of success, but as a disciple, he wants us growing in our relationship with him so that he can use us on a Tuesday afternoon in the break room, on a Saturday morning in the checkout line. You ever, you ever check yourself to see if the Lord wants you to, to do something for somebody? Say something to somebody? Not corrective. Encouraging. Huh? In the New Testament church, the spirit of prophecy in the New Testament church is for edification and exhortation and comfort. My mom used to sum it up this way. If you can't say, say, say something good about somebody, zip it. Yeah. Yeah. It's the spirit that gives life. The flesh profits nothing. And then he makes this radical statement. And the word, now this is Jesus talking. And the words that I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. 
what is? His words. Jesus' words are spirit and, li and life, not just information. Huh? His words are spirit and life. If you go through the Bible, it'll tell you several things about his word. His word is truth. His word is forever settled. His word is flawless. It is proven, sweeter than honey, more precious than gold. His word enlightens our path. It enlarges our path. In the, in the book of Proverbs, God says that his word is life to those who find it and health to their flesh. What's that mean? That means if you have a symptom in your body, instead of popping another pill, I mean, you can go to a doctor that you don't even know, but he's got some initials after his name, and you'll pay him fat money, whatever your insurance doesn't cover, and he'll tell you to take these drugs, and then you'll have a list of side effects this long, and you'll take them three times a day. Not even question it. But all of a sudden, the Almighty... The God who sacrificed his son for you says, my word is health to your flesh. And we say, well, I don't know about all that stuff. I try, Andy, I tried that faith stuff. I'm going to talk to you about that one too. I, I got to stay on point a little bit because I can. <laughs> Does it matter what you say? Let, let, <clears throat> let me give you an example. On, uh, i got to make sure I get this right. On November the 21st, 1992, huh? I know, that's way, way, way back. But that day, Tracy and I stood in front of a minister, and he said all the things that preachers say to marry somebody. And he said, Gary, do you take this woman to be your wife? I said, well, she knows my heart. Do, at that point, does it matter what you say? <laughs> Come on, you all. But a lot of us, oh, God knows my heart. He knows where I'm at. No, no. It, it, well, I, I, I think I, I, think I want to marry her. Huh? Does it matter? At that point, does it matter? Guys, you got to get this. The things that God has told us are forever settled, and they are spirit. They are living reality, and they work. Yeah? Yeah. Do we talk the things of God on a regular basis, or do we talk the things of the world? Do we talk more of, of uh, is our talking, should I, I should say it like this, is our talking more emotion-led and circumstance-led? How about our traditions? We, we always done it that way. You know, back at my church where I came from, well, you're not there now, so why are you bringing that up? <laughs> huh? You're here. We do it this way here. Well, I'm not used to that. Your traditions are speaking very loudly. Huh? In your, we all do it. I've been going through this uh, change with my diet. I've had to rebuke the devil a few times, and dare I say they were right, I won't, but I've been cutting all this stuff out, all the, the white stuff. Kate, I've only been in it for a couple of weeks. The first week I did it, I thought I was going to die. But I'm, I'm slowly making the turn, you know. But those things that you and I get used to, we talk that stuff, don't we? Let me show you something about talking in Matthew. Y'all got your Bibles. There's something else that Cody reminded me of. He said, man, when you have those scriptures on your screen, you don't give any of us time that's got a Bible to even go to it. You just, by the time you, I mean, by the time we find it, you're done. Matthew. Did I tell you where to go? Matthew chapter 12. We, we go in there today. <clears throat> now this passage, understand, Jesus is talking to Pharisees. 
and uh, he's dealt with a few different things. They, matter of fact, they accused Jesus of doing stuff under the anointing of the Holy Spirit by the devil. He said, you're healing people by the devil. That's what, right? The devil's the one that makes you sick. But in verse 33, and I, and they'll have some that they'll pop on the screen in a minute, but like I said, as I was studying, I saw more. So I'm going to give you extra today, okay? Matthew chapter 12, verse 33, Jesus speaking, he says this, either make the tree good, and it's fruit good, or make the tree bad, and it's fruit bad, for a tree is known by its fruit. And then he makes this loving statement, you brood of vipers. Now he's talking to the religious people of the day. Huh? How can you be an evil speak good things? For out of the abundance of your heart, out of the abundance of your heart, the mouth speaks. A good man out of the good treasure of his heart brings forth good things. An evil man out of the evil treasure brings forth evil things. But I say to you, every, <laughs> I read this and I'm like, hold up. I told my, I told my staff, I'm like, is, is he for real? Verse 36, I say to you, every, <laughs> ev- say every. 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 Now, who's talking here? Every idle word that men speak, they will give an account of it on the day of judgment. Now, I guarantee you, ain't nobody got that highlighted. (laughs) Nobody got that one underlined. Mm -mm. This word idle, I was trying to to figure out, what does he mean by idle word? The word idle is means it one of the words in the Greek means unemployed useless but my favorite one is this non working i say to you every non working word that you speak you will give an account of less well, legalistic i didn't write it Words, God, does it matter what we say? Do you ever listen to yourself? Let me keep going. For by your words, you will be justified. And by your words, you will be condemned. Does it matter what we say? If you go back to the Old Testament, matter of fact, in the book of Malachi, does anybody know, Jack, how many years was it after the prophet spoke in Malachi that God was quiet? 400-something, wasn't it? Over 400 years, Malachi is the last prophet God spoke through, not a word from the Lord for four. Y'all, we ain't even been a nation that long. And God was quiet to his people. And one of the last things that he says is in Malachi 3. And I know most of y'all think Malachi 3 is the, <clears throat> is the tithing chapter. Well, there's some truth about tithing in there, but there's something that you need to get that's a game changer right here. In Malachi 3, God says this, your words, talking to his people now, your words have been harsh against me, says the Lord. Why? Because you have said it is useless to serve God. What profit is it that we have kept all these ordinances? Can I paraphrase it for you today? I tried that church stuff. That's useless. All that Christianity stuff, that's just all in your head. Your word, God said, your words have been harsh against me. Huh? If you move on forward to Psalm 78, the psalmist is writing about the children of Israel when God delivered them. And in Psalm 78, he said, how often you provoked me. In the wilderness, talking about when God brought him out of Egypt, and you grieved me in the desert. Yes, again and again, you tempted me, you provoked me, and you limited me. Can a can a human limit God? I know some of y'all they oh God can do anything. Not according to Psalm seventy eight, He can't do anything. If He can do anything, He'd have got you saved a long time ago. Straightened your mouth up. 
They refused to remember what God did for them, what God said. If you go back and look at the story, God told them, I'm giving you the promised land. Go in and possess it. But because they chose to listen to a bunch of unbelieving preachers, they began to say what they said instead of what God said. And it cost them their lives. They stayed in that desert just wandering around. If our salvation hinges on what we say, and it does, right? You have to believe in your heart that Jesus came and died. You have to believe that he rose from the grave. And you have to do what? you got to say it. you got to confess it. If our salvation hinges on what we say, make no mistake, words have everything to do with the rest of our life of faith. Everything. Don't forget, Jesus told us, guys, my words, they're spirit and life. They're not just information. See, that's the thing I think a lot of the modern day church, we've concluded that it's just some good info. Oh, yeah, I, I know it. I know what that passage says. Oh, yeah, I know that. <laughs> it's not the knower. You got to believe this stuff. You got to get your mind made up in the face of circumstances. Because by your words, according to Jesus, by your words, you will be justified. So, my encouragement to all of us this morning is this that we start saying what our Father said. Jesus said, I only say what I see from the Father. See, God never intended, here, here's something that you need to get today. God never intended for his word to be reduced to nothing more than communication. I want you to think about that for a second. Like, what, what else is it for? Well, you are no longer just a human. You are born again. According to the Apostle Paul, you are a new creation in Christ. You are, are you ready for this? You are a speaking spirit. Whoa. Now you're getting weird. I've, all, I've been weird. Yeah. You think about this for a second. Everything that you and I experience in what we call life, what we call humanity, it was created, it came out of words. God said, light be. Everything was, God spoke it. See, maybe you can look at it like this. Words are spiritual containers. What's that mean? When you say what God says, you are speaking spirit, reality. Because Jesus said, my words are spirit, Holy Spirit words, containing my power, my nature. I guess I need to deal with this. In Mark 11, I better not turn there. I, I won't ever get done. But in Mark 11, you all know the, the famous Brother Hagin scripture about the story of, them, of Jesus talking to a tree. Now, I want you to listen to something very carefully today. Because that story is also in Matthew, I think. Well, if you write this down, you can go study it later. It's in Matthew 21, I think. Same story, same account. Jesus spoke, spoke to the tree, and the tree died from the roots. Next day, they're going out of town. Peter says, Lord, the tree that you spoke to, it's dead. And Jesus said, Peter, I did that because I'm the son of God. I want you to understand who I am. You can't do it, but I'm the son of God. Now listen, some of y'all like, wait, I don't think it's, no, it doesn't say that. But the overwhelming majority of the church thinks that nonsense. He's Jesus. He can do that. According to the story, I'm smiling, Amanda. <laughs> like you're getting a little intense. I know because I'm through with the unbelief with this. He spoke to a tree, a tree obeyed him, and then the very next statement that he was explaining to his disciples, have faith in God. And then he went on to show them how it works. For I tell you the truth. Why would Jesus have to say, I'll tell you the truth? Because he told us in John, my, word are, my words are truth. I'm going to show you in a minute. God can't lie. So if he told us we could speak to a tree. Now what, what's, no, no, let, let, okay. Sorry, Lord. 
Go to Mark 11. I'm trying to dance around it. Put your eyes on the word. Verse 23, for assuredly I say to you, whoever, who's a whoever? Whoever says to this mountain, now he's already switched from a tree to a mountain. Whoever says to the mountain, be removed and cast into the sea and doesn't doubt in his heart, but believes, say believe, believe. but believes what he says will come to pass. He will have what he says. Now, I know many of you have heard this scripture. <clears throat> Just like me, you stepped out and tried it and nothing happened that you were aware of. And then the next thing out of your mouth was what he talked about in Malachi. That stuff doesn't work. I tried that faith stuff. That doesn't work. You're right. Not for you. Because you don't believe it. Oh, no, I believe it. Now, you may know what the scripture says, but if you believe it, then you didn't get shook. Come on. Some of us, we have to get to the place where we evaluate our faith. We do believe it. In the middle of trials, in the middle of storms, in the middle of difficulties, get to the place where you believe what you say. Now, obviously, Jesus walked in the fullness of the power of God. You and I, we're not there yet. But according to the Master and his lessons throughout the New Testament, he expects us to get there. He told, and if you look at the Great Commission, he told us to get there. In John chapter 14, he said, hey guys, anybody who believes in me, anybody who does what? Believe. Believes in me, the things I do, he can do. Did he really mean that? See, I think sometimes Jesus just played mind games with us. That's what most of the church thinks, because we step out and try it, and we don't see the same results. Listen, you need to let some air out of your head. You're too puffed up. You think you're something you're not. If you step out and try and you don't see the same results that Jesus did, then humble yourself for a minute and self-evaluate. There are mountains I'm talking to right now. There are days I pull up in front of this building and I sit in the parking lot. And I'm like, building? Well, that's just weird. Well, then stay where you're at. Jesus talked to a tree. Jesus talked to storms. He told us we could talk to mountains. I got a mountain in front of me I won't pay for. I said, build it. You are paid for in the name of Jesus. Huh? Now, I know somebody that, well, that's just crazy. That's called unbelief. You can label it whatever you want. Go back and read Malachi 3 because your words are harsh against the Lord and what he said because he said we can do this. Do you believe it? See, I told you this a few weeks ago out of the book of Colossians. Paul says this, the way we get in is how we live in. The way we get in, how you get in, you believe in your heart and you confess with your mouth. See, when it comes to what we say, Paul makes it very clear in the book of Romans that our righteousness of faith speaks a certain way. Check this out in Romans chapter 10. I'll give you a minute. Romans chapter 10, verse 8, the word, what word? God's word. The word is near you, it's in your mouth, and it's in your heart. That is the word of faith that we preach. That if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart, now this word heart, this is your inner man, it is your soul, it is your, your being that your spirit and, and soul communicate with. And once you're born again, your spirit changes and it's made in the likeness and image of God. That's why your soul has to be transformed to line up with your spirit. But they flow together. Like how does that work? They're, they're, they're one, but they're separate. It's just like the Trinity. Jesus said, I will never leave you. But he did. He lives in heaven. So who's here? The Holy Spirit. He's different, 
but he's the same. Got that? Your spirit and your soul, they are separate, but they're one. And you need to transform your soul so it will listen to your spirit more. For with your heart, your inner man, you believe unto righteousness. And with your mouth, confession is made unto salvation. This word confession here in the Greek, I'm not Greek, so don't catch me in the lobby and say, well, you didn't pronounce that right. All right. But this Greek word confession is the Greek word homologio. Like what? It simply means this, say the same thing. Say the same thing. Same thing as what? Same thing that God said. See, for example, if God says he'll meet all your needs according to his riches and glory. Now, I know all the unbelieving contextual preachers that want to keep everything in context. And Paul was talking about that specific event at that specific time. And that's what that scripture means. I'm like, mm, well, you just shut the Holy Spirit down. That is truth, but that, that, that's not all the truth. Yes, you need to interpret the Bible within context. But you also need to let the Holy Spirit teach you this is how Paul lived. He said, my God will supply all your needs according to his riches at the local bank. In heaven. So he has riches in heaven. There are things that are already available for you. Well, how do you get stuff from heaven? Guys, I want you to start thinking two worlds. Kingdom of heaven kingdom of this earth. Who's the God of this earth? Satan is. Paul, Jesus both make it very clear. Satan is the God of this earth. Who's the God of the kingdom of heaven? El Shaddai, the Almighty. All right. In earth, we have a system, a, if you will, a means of exchange. If I want goods, you know, let's say that, uh, Andy's doing a project for me. He's a very successful builder in our community, and he's doing a project for me, you know. And so he goes to Lowe's to get all the stuff because Lowe's has the stuff, all right? What does Andy need to get the stuff? Money. <laughs> well, no, I'm just going to buy it by faith. <laughs> How's that going to work for you? In this world, in this world, y'all with me? I know you think I'm, 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 I'm trying to get you somewhere because i got to get you believing before you start talking because a lot of Christians, they get a message and they just start talking and you don't see any results and you want to blame God and you want to get frustrated and quit. Cause, so let's back it up. If he goes to Lowe's to buy materials for my project, he can't buy it on faith. He's got to have what? You know, when he gets the stuff, he can't. Pastor, I'm just going to build it by faith. Okay, I'm going to pay you by faith. <laughs> huh? Come on, you all. In this world, there is a means of exchange. Now, Andy doesn't get Lowe's to move. Lowe's already has the stuff. All he's got to do is go get it. See, a lot of people, when you get over into the kingdom, because in the kingdom of heaven, money won't do you anything. It doesn't work there. Y'all with me? Faith is the means of exchange in the kingdom of heaven. Now, once again, now faith doesn't move God. Just like Lowe's already has the stuff, God already has the stuff. It, everything's there. That's why Paul said, my God will provide all your needs. What's all your needs mean? Huh? What about that peace that passes understanding? My God supplies all my needs. See, some of y'all are your professional worriers. You need to take that scripture because a lot of people, they've only used that scripture from a monetary standpoint. My God will provide all my needs. That is what it means, but that's all means all. I mean, in every language, Hebrew, Greek, Aramaic, all means all. My God will supply all my needs according to his riches and glory. Yeah, there are things that God has for me, and by faith, I choose to receive it. I have it now. Thank you, Father. All my needs are met. Sure doesn't look like it. Stop walking by faith. God said, so maybe you should start saying what God said. Now, if you walk out and say, well, I'm a millionaire, and you don't have a million dollars, well, that's a lie. That's not what God said. But if you find words, Jesus said, my words are spirit. And if you say what God said, you can't lie. 
Come on, you all. Because when you get this part of it settled, the homologio part, the confession part, will change. And you won't be shaken when you speak to the mountain and you tell it to move and it laughs in your face. You're like, okay, okay. You go back, you reload. What, what's that mean? That's, <laughs> I've been watching too much TV, okay? I, I watched Shooter the other night. It got <laughs> Hey, some stuff, listen, there's some stuff going on in, in the government today that's going on in Shooter. Anyway, I can't go there. <clears throat> what was I talking about? <laughs> but <laughs> reloading and coming back. See, most of us, we speak to the mountain, and it, the symptom stays the same. The, 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 the bill stays the same. The worry, the anxiety, the, nothing changes, and all of a sudden, that's more powerful than God is in your life because you are wavering. James says the double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways. Huh? So understand what Paul wants us to get out of this lesson. Your confession has to stay the same as long as you're saying what God says. I am strong in the Lord and the power of his might. The Holy Spirit is quickening my mortal body right now. According to Psalm 91, Man, Psalm 91, that, that page during, during the pandemic, Psalm 91 just got tore out of the Bible. Nobody believed that stuff. I watched Christians freak out. Psalm 91 was gone. But it's still real. Should you dare to believe in your heart and say with your mouth, no plague shall come near my dwelling. I dwell in the secret place of the shadow of the Almighty. Now, pay close attention. He said dwell, not visit. <laughs> okay? Yeah. Big difference there. You got that? And I love how Psalm 91 wraps things up. And my youth is renewed like the eagle. I got a little gumption. Huh? My youth is renewed, man. So as a disciple, does it matter how we talk. Well, I don't know about that. See, for you today, all of y'all that, well, I don't know about that because your religious tradition is choking you out, at least stop talking that garbage. Even if you're not on the same page yet, you got a Bible, prove me wrong. I dare you. In the words of the Apostle Paul, I beseech you, brothers, by the mercies of God. Get in your Bible and, and prove me wrong. Yeah. Yeah. I welcome it. You know the Apostle James, he, he, deal, he has a whole chapter on the mouth. In James chapter 3, he says this out of the New Living. Indeed, we, we make many mistakes. For if we could control our tongue, <laughs> huh? we would be perfect. And we could control ourselves in every way. If you can control your tongue. And then he goes on to say this, because we put bits in a horse's mouth, in a horse's mouth, and it, we, we tell the horse where to go. We have a rudder on a ship, and that rudder tells, you know, that's where the captain, you know, just think for a second. Tracy and I, years ago, she, uh, she won a, a thing with, with her job, uh, a, a free cruise with Royal Caribbean Cruise. And this is a massive ship, bigger than our building. It has thousands of people on it. And it was cool, I guess, but uh, you're confined on the ocean to the building or to the boat. <clears throat> but anyway, just think if the captain took us all on a tour of the ship and showed us all the different things. Because, you know, it was interesting. I watched how they put the thing in, a, 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 the, how they docked it. It was cool to watch how they maneuvered that thing. But, he, he, you know, just think if you were being given a tour of the ship and the captain's showing you all these different things on the ship and, and you, he, you get to the rudder and you're like, what's that? And he says, well, that's the rudder. Well, what's it do? Oh, it doesn't do anything. It's not important. That's how we are with our mouth. According to the Apostle James, inspired by the Holy Spirit, your tongue is the rudder of your life. And just like Malachi and Psalm 78, we hinder God with our mouth because we say that dumb stuff. Oh, I tried that faith stuff and it didn't work. 
The minute you say that, what you were believing for just got shut down. You just killed it. Because the, the things of the Spirit, let's go back to the natural for a second. Andy's going to Lowe's, and he's going to buy my materials, and he gets there, and he wants to buy it on credit. Well, what do you do, what do, you do to buy it on credit? You have to be approved. So what if he doesn't get approved? See, did I l- Listen, you all. If he doesn't get approved, he's calling me, uh, G. <laughs> it's embarrassing, but uh, now that would never happen. <laughs> I'm just, he's like, uh, you're going to have to pay for this stuff, man. Let's go back over to the spirit. There are, there are things set in motion a certain way. You have to be approved to operate. Your mouth getting in agreement with what God said and saying it. Things begin, remember the, the, the tree died at the roots first. The tree, what Jesus did to the tree went into effect right away, but you couldn't see it right away. There are things that you have spoken that God said about your life, but you don't see it yet. Stop killing your faith with a bunch of unbelieving talking. Well, you, you're just getting legalistic, am I? You got a Bible. I'm giving you enough stuff today. Proverbs chapter 18 says this. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. I wonder if that's really what he meant. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. And those who love it will eat the fruit of it. What's he saying? The New Living says it like this. The tongue can bring death or life. Watch this. Those who love to talk reap the consequences. I think the the writer of Proverbs says, where many words are found, sin isn't far away. (laughs) See, some of y'all, you, there's a bunch of people, guys, we can talk a good game. Huh? We're good at that. But getting to the place where we're actually intentionally speaking life over ourselves speaking the things of God over our life. Just like we said in the beginning about the Word of God, I am who God says I am. You know that the psalmist says, all that I put my hand to is blessed. That means your business. That means your kids, huh? your body, your home. All that you put your hand to, if you're starting a new adventure, you're getting ready to try something new, take a minute. Get the Word of God settled in your life. Then begin to speak the Word of God. Prophesy your future. See, when it comes to what we say, here's something all of us, we need to stay, <clears throat> we need to stay aware of this. In the book of Ephesians, it tells us not to give any place to the enemy. Paul actually says the devil, don't give any place to the devil. And I can tell you, from experience as your pastor one of the surefire ways that we give place to the devil is with our words you think about this for a second remember kingdom of heaven kingdom of darkness there are only demons don't reproduce you all they're spirit beings there's a fallen group of demons that rebelled and were excommunicated from the realms of the kingdom of heaven but there are the the, the same amount of demons that was in Noah's day still the same amount today there's not more of them what are you saying I'm saying that they can't put up with you all the time they're all over the place see they don't have to worry about people that aren't born again because they already have them so that takes billions off their to-do list they don't have to worry about Christians that are in cruise control just come just come Sunday morning, get a little nugget and then go back to doing your own thing. Don't bother me. They don't have to worry about you because you're not, you're no threat to their kingdom. But for those of you that are doing something, they have an assignment. And they will harass you. And they're not showing up like Hollywood. They're coming right here between these ears. Just like they did with Adam and Eve. Did God really say? And he manipulated. Now, Adam and Eve, they walked with God, saw him, communed with him. And if Satan could deceive them, come on, you better pay attention. 
one of the biggest things we do because he can't, he's not God. He is the antichrist. He can't be everywhere all the time. He's not omnipresent. He's not omniscient. He doesn't know everything. He doesn't even know your thoughts until you open your mouth. At that point, you have given place to the enemy. Guys, don't let him use your words. Don't give him any place. See, when it comes to hearing from God, being diligent in allowing the transformation, be a spiritual person. Give place to him. Speak the things of God over your life. Jesus said, my words are spirit and they are life. See, you have to get to the place where you're actually believing to the degree that you're convinced and you take the rudder of your life and you begin to set the course of it with what you say. I am who God says I am. I can have what God says I can have. I can do what God says I can do. Huh? The favor of the Lord is on me. He has armed me with strength. He goes before me and makes my way perfect. He enlarges my path so that I don't slip. He arms me with strength. He fills me with joy in abundance. He meets all of my needs. The joy of the Lord is my strength. When you get to the place where this is, remember what we started out in the beginning, Jesus said, from the abundance of your heart, the mouth speaks. So you can always tell where somebody's at. All you got to do is give them a few minutes and listen. You can tell right where they're at. See, this is the thing that, that I, I want you all leaving here with today. What we say does matter. To the degree that it is your only entrance into this new world. You believe in your heart and you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord. So if you're in the room today and you've never done that, today's your day. We want to give you the opportunity to, be, to believe and confess. We want to give you the opportunity to meet our King and Savior, to become a son or daughter of the Almighty God, to get to the place where you're allowed this wonderful privilege of experiencing a world in your humanity that God has made available for every one of us. But it starts with this one simple truth. You have to believe in your heart and confess with your mouth. I'm just checking right now in my, in my, in my heart because I feel like there's some of you in this room today, this talk has, has challenged your tradition a little bit. Thank you, Lord. And you've been listening to me and the things that are weighing on your soul, the circumstances, you're allowing all these other things outside here to dictate your life your emotions, <clears throat> your decisions. And God is saying today that if you will get to the place where you believe me and you trust me with all of your heart, stop trying to figure it out. Trust him. Yeah, but God, I got a deadline. Okay. Trust him. Yeah, but what if, I, what if, what if the deadline comes and, 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 I, and I, I, I lose this? Where are you supposed to have it? hear that do we? I just dumped cold water on the room. There are, th there are things that we have in our life that God never told us to have. God never told us to do. Getting to this place where we trust Him. It will take some faith on your part. And that's where the Word comes in. Having talks like this, setting aside some time in your own personal life where the Spirit of God can minister to you. If that's you today and you're fighting this thing, just like we were singing that song, something's got to break. In your life right now, the Spirit, stop waiting on an emotion to tell you God's doing something. This is one of the biggest downfalls in the modern day church is we've got to have a signal of an, an emotional hype to let us know God's moving. Lowe's has the stuff all the time. All you got to do is reach over into Lowe's and cha-ching. God has the stuff all the time. It has nothing to do with emotion. He's got it. And it's yours by faith should you choose to reach over and take it. 
So if that's you today and this thing's been weighing on you, whether it's traditions, it's circumstances, whatever it is, in the name of Jesus today, you be set free from that. Receive that word right now. Say it with me. Lord, I receive it by faith. I have it now. In your name, Jesus. It's that simple. We've overcomplicated it. Now here's the thing, now you're going to go check. If, if you're still in wait and see mode, then you're not in faith mode. You're still waiting to see. They're not the same thing. Now you will see, but these things take time sometimes. Yeah? All right, back to my original question. If you're in this room today and you've never taken that initial step of faith, you believe in your heart and you're ready to make that confession, today's your day. I don't know if I'm wanting to be part of this church. Well, that's okay. We'll help you find one. There's, pretty, there's plenty of wonderful churches in our community. But you're here. Don't leave without Jesus. At least you're, God brought you here for that. Then get it. Get Jesus in your life. Amen? We made it so simple. I know people criticize me all the time the way, the way we do our salvation. Well, do it however you want, man. When you lead somebody to the Lord, whatever. God made it simple on purpose. I am, in the words of Leonard Skinner, a simple man. Huh? Some of the younger generations like, who's Leonard Skinner? You're in the wrong place to ask that. All right. If you're here and you have that thought, that's the Holy Spirit pulling on your heart. Take a step of faith today. Church, we're going to say the prayer. You all say it with us. Those of you listening or watching, stop what you're doing. You're about to take the greatest step of faith in your life and become this brand new person, but you got to do it. Let's all say the prayer together. Lord Jesus, come into my life and make me new. And from this day forward, Jesus is my Lord. Heaven is my home. And I will never be the same. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, if you said the prayer and you're here Stop by our information desk. We've got some stuff we want, to, we want to bless you with. Those of you listening or watching, tell somebody. Call the office. Let us know. We want to help you in your journey of faith. Now, this week, I know you all, you hear me say this all the time, opportunities waiting on you out, outside these four walls. But here's, here's something I want you to get dialed in on. I want you to take these words that I've given you today and meditate in them. That's why I'm wanting you to start writing some stuff down. Begin to speak. Find you some promises from God's word and begin to speak them over your life. You're just like James said, and you're going to take the rudder of your life, and the course of your life is going to change. But you have to start. Amen. God bless you guys. We love you. Y'all have an awesome week.